Get this. Weekday mornings from nine on Triple M. Now, our co-host today is here. It's Tom Gleisner. Give him a round of hey. Thank you. Welcome aboard, Tom. Thank you for that cart applause. I love, I love the, <laughs> I love the taped applause because often when you go on shows, they try and get a bit of live applause happening. Yeah. But when not even the producer joins in, you know you're struggling. And you get that sort of sound, and it's, it's more kind of. Uh, yeah. Sad than anything. But they, they get the sales team in to do it around. <laughs> and they just applaud the ads. That's yeah, all they seem to do. Exactly. Tony, I've got to say, it is just, personally, take a moment here, it is a thrill to hear you back on air and back saying the phrase Triple M. <laughs> the last time I heard you utter those words, you were sitting in the back of a Black Thunder Jeep wearing a suede bomber jacket, <laughs> handing out boxes of tacos whose use-by date had expired in 1982, and urging listeners to stay around for another concrete blonde double shot. Oh, my God, concrete blonde. And now, blonde. now, here we are again. The, the, the circle has turned. Now, look, people listening around the country might not uh, recall that uh, you and I used to host breakfast on Triple, and we did it for five years in Melbourne. We did. It was called Eon FM originally. That's right. Yes. And uh, then those concrete blonde double shots kicked in, <laughs> and it was magic all the way. And what, what do you remember of those days? I, these petty disputes, we used to be, in, in locked in battle with the rival FM radio station, yeah. and we'd have fights. In fact, I think this one, Ed, you might be interested in this, almost yes. went to court wow. over who came up with the idea. We came up with, um, oh, there was a, a double shot Tuesdays, and they right. came up with two up Tuesdays, <laughs> and that virtually made it to the Supreme Court on wow. who came up with the notion of playing the same bad song twice on the one day. <laughs> I think Two Up might have just got ahead of us on that one. There were so many shonky and dodgy promotions mm. in those days, oh, yes. and the one you probably remember the best was uh, the Golden Mile. Yes. Do you remember the Golden What's Mile? That? It was it was well intentioned. Yeah. It was an idea of raising <laughs> funds for I can't even know what the charity was. Yeah. Often they were just fronts for the sales department, but <laughs> the idea was to raise money for for a good cause, and we were going to urge our listeners to come down to a major esplanade in Melbourne, wasn't it? Yeah. And um, line up gold coins, one dollar or two dollar coins. But I think the coins yeah. were quite new at that point. The, it was a novelty, the dollar coin. Mm, so mm. we were drawing attention to the new currency. And we were going to make a mile of golden coins and then donate all the money. Oh, yeah. And can you just think for a moment how much money that would be? Mm. Like a mile <laughs> of one dollar coins. That's like about a billion dollars. <laughs> Isn't it? Not even the breakfast team got paid that much back then. And, and it was promoted for weeks. The Golden Mile right. is stretching towards you. That's the one. And, and on the day, it was a cold, windswept morning on a yeah. bleak, exposed part of some Esplanade street. And no one was there. No one was walking past to contribute the yeah. said golden coins. Yeah. And so we realised after about half an hour or so, we how many... How many inches had we achieved? Well, there was a big decision had to be made, which was, do we preserve the idea of the mile, mm, mm. or do we just get how many of the coins we've got and just line them up? Yes. And if we'd done that, it would have been about a golden three metres. That's right. So I remember the programme director's gone, no, nah, we've got to stick with the mile idea. It's all around the mile. We'll have to space them apart. <laughs> So there was like about a block between each coin. We, and had, the... we had security guards who had to stay in contact with talkie, walkie-talkies because they were that far out of sight of each other. Shirley Strawn was guarding two coins and he was running back and forth as kids tried to steal them. It was the worst promotion in radio history. The golden 212 metres as it That's came great. to be known. Even then we were spacing them out. Yeah. Those were the days oh, yes, yes. of radio. And uh, I should just point out, thanks to everyone who's called in with Tony Mockbell sightings. It's the latest <laughs> craze. Find Tony Mockbell. And, of course, he supposedly fled the country. What I love is, uh, Tom, that the, the supergrass who was planning to testify him, he's fled the country. Mm, yeah. I think the judge, I think Judge Gillard's done a bolt yeah. as well. <laughs> Everyone involved in the, in the case has just fled. But, uh, look, we're here to talk about uh, the new show. Uh, look, I just should point out, people are calling in about segments we used to do on The Breakfast Show. Like, we're talking 15 years mm, ago yeah. on Triple M in, in Melbourne only. Uh, someone has called in asking if you and Tom are going to do View from the Poof. View from the Poof. What was View from <laughs> the Poof? That? View from the Poof was Tony and I did a... Te we reviewed television for that evening. We went through the highlights. And then it went for about a year and then we axed ourselves because <laughs> it was so bad. And then we returned with... The new view from the oh, book. Oh, the new view. Because <laughs> that's, that's one of the first radio tricks we learnt. You just add new. No, all new. As soon as something's all new, it's... I was speaking of that. I was do doing a, a, a bunch of uh, radio interviews uh, yesterday for uh, um, Thank God You're Here. Yeah. And, you know, you do, you do them around the 
around the country, various regional stations, and you're always given a list of who you're going to talk to. And I, I, I was going to be, they're all zoos or cages. Although <laughs> some place, I think on the central coast of New South Wales, it's the new zoo. Oh, and I, we've I, got I, the new zoo in Adelaide, I think. Oh, okay. We follow the new zoo with John Blackman. Oh, yeah, you know, that's, John was on one of the shows. But the, invariably, you're given the list of names of who you're going to talk to. It's usually like yeah. Dave O, Jim, Scotty, <laughs> Sue. And then always about 30 seconds before you go to where a, a harried publicist runs in and says, um, Scotty's no longer part of the team. <laughs> There's always one guy that's been axed in the last day or two. And I'm always intrigued to know why, what happened. Oh, look, what would he have done? Some terrible accident in the back of a Black Thunder. <laughs> well, I remember when I was working for Triple M in Sydney, mm. sometimes that would happen. Sometimes you'd, you'd be there and there'd be someone and they'd sort of walk past and give you a wave. And then the next day, gone. Gone. And no one would just, no one would mention it yeah. as if they never existed. Barry was, was there one day and the next day it was the all new Barry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but hey, we'll we'll get back to this kind yes. of uh, our old material in mm. just a moment. But tell us about uh, thank God you're here, or as Peter Rosethorn called it yesterday, the door show. <laughs> the door show. Yes, it, look, it, it is a slightly complicated show to explain. Very easy to understand once you see it. But it, there's a touch of deal or no deal about it. I have to admit, <laughs> even, <laughs> even as I'm explaining it. In short, each week we take four performers, what pretty well known mm. faces, people with you know great performance abilities and comic timing. And we ask them one by one to step through a door. In some cases, we push them through the door. (laughs) Right. And waiting on the other side is an entire world. There is a set. There are actors. Indeed, a young Ed here is one of those waiting. Everyone knows what's going on except the key person who's just been pushed through the door. Right. So it's, it's about survival. It's watching someone trying to work out who they are, what they're doing there, and, and just keeping their head above water for a couple of minutes. <laughs> and it's mesmerising to watch that act of survival. Yeah. Now, I've noticed you've got, you have got great performers, people like uh, Frank Woodley. I mean, I just can watch Frank doing anything. Yes. Yeah. Just walking down a street is hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely. That could be a show. He gets quite a crowd. <laughs> And we've got uh, tonight's show, we've got Fifi Box as well. Peter Rosethorn, you know, of course, who was on here yesterday yeah. and from Kath and Kim. Uh, and they're fabulous, fabulous yeah. performers. And, and the audience just love watching that sort of high wire act of someone trying to survive. And so far, we've taped a couple of shows. So far, nothing's you know, gone right, completely. Right. I think no. true, Ed. We haven't had a complete disaster, have no, we? No, no, no. And we think, if, look, if it happened, we'd just sell the footage to Bert Newton's <laughs> 20 to 1 worst moments on Australian TV. So it'd be a win-win either way. Now, what is the criteria for people? Because you mentioned performers. You've got people who can think on their feet. Is that really, you have to have people like Absolutely. that? You couldn't just, uh, you know, push, um, I don't know, a sportsman through the door? No, no. In fact, some people said, oh, it's kind of, it's kind of like celebrities doing this. And no, and no because no. celebrities who are just, who are nothing but celebrities, are good at showing up at, openings of nightclubs, but they couldn't <laughs> they couldn't do this unless we did a nightclub scene and maybe that'd yeah. be excellent. Uh, but no, you've got there's got to be performance skills here. Right. So we so we're very carefully selecting people such as we mentioned like um Angus Sampson, Fifi, yep, yep. Frank Woody, Sean McAuliffe's um All right, yep. well, I think we're gonna drag Glenn Robbins, Santo right. I think is gonna do one. So it's it's um that sort of caliber. And do people try and uh, you know cheat? Do they try and find out what the scenario is? Mm. Going? Ed is nodding. Yeah, yes, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. Right? Oh yeah, before the show, or mm. um, my friend Josh, who did it a little while up, the week before. Yes, spent the whole week trying to trick me into telling him what was going on. Yeah, we, we, so we've started uh, putting them in orange jumpsuits and just locking them in dark <laughs> rooms, and uh, hopefully the, the silence will sort of uh, pervade. They, we won't tell them anything, and in fact, they're not even given their costume until about a right. minute before they go out yeah, right. onto stage. So we really do try and keep that element of surprise and peril. And I'm sitting there as I'm playing the role of... Yes. Mm, judge. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, don't let that word judge put you off. I'm not, no. I'm not one of your nasty. No. You're not going down the Bernard King path. <laughs> no. <laughs> rehearsal, rehearsal. Rehearsal, rehearsal. <laughs> Do you remember the woman sang that song once? So we're going back to potluck now. On um, the song from a chorus line where it's uh, "Kiss the day goodbye," and, right, um, right. and it was "Point me towards tomorrow." He goes, "Point me towards the door." Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, the one... I'm not. I'm not him. I'm. I'm not your no. Dicko or your Tom McKenny. I'm more your Evie Hayes from Young Talent Time. A, a reference I might be lost on you, Tony. But Ed, you remember? She I'm was, there. She was kind and nurturing, and I'm supportive. And I'm that. I'm that sort of role. I'm not there to sort of you know pick people apart. We don't even. We don't. We don't vote people off. There's none of that. Right. No evictions. It's a great vote. Mm, it's probably the first show on Channel Ten not to have SMS voting. <laughs> people still SMS anyway. They can't. Yes. In fact, if you don't think we should have SMS voting, you know, ring now. I'm but, still not even sure what SMS voting. Yes, that's why I have it on the show, Tom. He explains the real world to me. Exactly.
exactly. And we've and the whole thing's beautifully held together by Shane Bourne. Right. Yeah, Bourney. Is, Bourney's our host, and it's just fabulous to see Shane yeah. back on the screen because obviously he brings you know yeah. great experience and comic timing and his own seniors card. So. <laughs> He's the complete package for the show. We're very happy. Ed, have you received some information? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Demel, she's told us that $64,373.60 is a mile of $1 coins. How did they work that out? She went out and did it. <laughs> <laughs> went out and had a golden mile. Good on it. He's good, that Mel. <laughs> it's good to know. Thanks, Mel. Tom is here because, uh, well, because he's a friend of the program and because, mm-hmm. thank God, you're here goes out this evening. Now, you just happened to mention in passing that Ed is part of the, the cast. He's yeah. part of the ensemble, nonetheless, we refer to them as, because each each week as our performers step through the door of doom, they're met by uh, a bunch of fabulous actors who, who know what's going on, but, of course, they have to think on their feet because right. the scene could go any number of ways, and Ed yeah. is one of those people who anchors the, uh, the entire Ed's not project. been sure whether he's allowed to mention that all week. Oh, he's okay. not sure whether it's meant to be a secret. <laughs> no, no, no. You're allowed to say it. <laughs> Out of the bag. Well, it's, it's great. And, and Tom was saying before about the surprise and the look on their face, mm. the look on Rose Thorne or, or Samson's face or Fifi Box's face when they walk through the door and they look at you in the eye and you say, yes. thank God, you're here. just... And you guys are all naked and they're going, yeah, where is this going? Yeah, yeah. Well, they know where it's going yeah, pretty soon yeah, after pretty that. Obvious, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's just great. Yeah. I'm uh, going. What we do on this show is we just uh, tear interesting stories out of the paper, mm-hmm. attempt to fashion it into a program. Uh, <laughs> Playboy is chasing the pink dollar. Playboy magazine is going to be coming out with a gay version. This is the latest news. Right. Um, do you remember? Uh, we of course have met uh, Harry Shearer a few times. Yes. I love that phrase, the pink dollar. Yes, I'm, that's, that's thrown me ever so slightly. But move on. Chasing the pink dollar. Well, Harry Shearer, uh, when he, of course, the vo- voice of uh, Mr. Burns and Smithers and uh, Derek Smalls and yes. Spinal Tap, and came out to be in an episode of Frontline, been on the panel a few times, and he wrote a fantastic musical, stage musical called J Edgar, with an exclamation mark <laughs> about J Edgar Hoover. And he, I think it was going on in Chicago, and I said, is it going to go to Broadway? You've got to take that to mm. Broadway. And he's gone, we can't go to Broadway. We've hit the pink ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Harry and his group, not gay enough for Broadway. Is that right? Isn't that yes. a great phrase? Wow. Hitting the, the pink, pink ceiling. ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the gay playboy is coming your way. Ben Lee has been hit by a flying bottle. Who would throw something at Ben Lee? Is that music criticism, do you think? That's taking it too far. <laughs> Does that I constitute mean... a review? I'm not sure. <laughs> well, at, uh, at the Download Festival, mm. uh, a big metal festival that my yep. friend Luke goes to every year, they throw bottles, Yeah. but they wee in the bottle first oh, okay. oh, and right. then launch it at a band so, that they don't like. And I said, what if you do like the band? He said, you wee in two bottles and throw two. Uh, it's oh, like a right. Molotov cocktail that would <laughs> never light. Have you thought about uh, maybe in- instituting that policy on Thank God You're Here? <laughs> just cut to Tom. Hang on a second. Just go for another 30 seconds. Just improvise. I've got the 1.5 litre. It was a mistake. A okay. glass and a half. <laughs> Uh, what else have we got here? Listen to this. There's going to be uh, Jessica Simpson. Who uh, do you find? Do you find no. Jessica Simpson attractive? No, no, no. I struggle. She looks to me like a skull that somebody has sprayed with fake tan and put a wig on the top of. <laughs> That's just me. I'm an old person, so I take my. But she was in the fantastic Dukes of Hazard movie, yes, oh. yes. and she's Ooh. now going to be in the. Equally fantastic Baywatch movie. There's going to be a Baywatch movie. <laughs> right. And they're trying to convince David Hasselhoff to be in it. I don't understand that. Isn't the idea with these movies to get new people yes, to be in yes. them? Although, didn't didn't the guy, uh, Bruce, um, who played Batman, he offered to be in the Batman movie. Adam Bruce West. Adam West, that's right. That would have oh, been wow. so but good. But seriously, he genuinely said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm available. They haven't called me yet. Yes, because you're 87. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote a letter. This is how daggy I used to be. I once wrote a letter to the Zucker Brothers, right. you know, did uh, a yes. flying Oh, or airplane know. and top mm. secret, suggesting that in the second Naked Gun movie, they should cast Adam West and Burt Ward as the mayor and the assistant mayor right. and play it exactly like Batman mm. and yes. Robin, but with no references to Batman and Robin, just the interplay. Okay, and, the, of course, the exits. We've got to get down to the mayor's office. <laughs> Those fantastic Adam West exits. What response did you get? Nothing. Never no, heard. No. No. Never That'd heard right. from the Zuckers. That'd be right. Just a restraining order. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, look, yesterday on the program, we went to a fairly offensive press conference mm. with Peter Costello and where he was going on about uh, man love. Yeah, uh, tumescence was the most <laughs> offensive thing I heard. I don't think the word fount of tumescence has ever been heard on Triple M before. <laughs> so already, you know, we're way out in front. Fount of Tumescence Friday. There's a there's a segment for you. Double shot Tumescence. Cold hard trousers. 
But uh, we had a few complaints, and in the interests of balance, uh, we're going to um, go across to Kim Beasley. Of course, the uranium issue is on everyone's mm. minds. So let's cross there now. Mr Beasley, do you expect the Labor Party to form a unified view with regards uh, to uranium at any time in the future? No, of course not. Why would we do that? That's not what the party's about. Uh, agreeing on things. I mean, why would we go down that path? Well, the suggestion is that the party's left is about to cave in on the three mines policy. Oh, well, look, if, if that happens, I'll, I'll change my mind back again. I mean, we can't have the Labor Party having one view on things. But it's this kind of squabbling that's seen your approval rating drop to its lowest point ever. Look, I don't agree with that. I think it can go a lot lower. I think I can get it down to single figures. And I'm not going to be able to do that if we start having unified views. Right. Uh, just what is the Labor Party about these days? Look, you've seen the news. It's about fat blokes with glasses and beards standing in a town hall on a cold night shouting at each other about things that people don't really care about anymore. Versus blokes in shiny suits who are basically the Liberal Party with a different coloured guernsey on. And we've worked very hard to get it to that point. I'm not just going to piss all that away now. Oh, Mr Beasley, do you realise that uranium earns us more than half of what we earn from cheese exports? Look, I like cheese. Of course I like cheese. Who said I didn't like cheese? Nobody. Cheese is great. Are you suggesting we could build a reactor that's powered entirely by cheese? Um, no. Cheese power. A cheese powered economy. It's clean, delicious energy. What are you talking about? Cheese. I think we should be exporting cheese. Well, we are exporting cheese. I love cheese. I want some cheese. Can I have some cheese? Uh, Mr Beasley, if we could put cheese aside for a moment, um, what do you say to these polls that suggest that you haven't got a hope in hell of winning the next election? I don't say anything. I just get photographed digging a hole. Look at that. Or patting a kitty on the head. Waving from a plane. We're eating some cheese. I really like cheese. Yes, um, you mentioned that. D does Martin Ferguson like cheese? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. But if he does like cheese, then I don't like it. And if he's middling on cheese? Well, then I'll be photographed at a school, patting a kitty on the head, smiling for no reason at all, sending him on his way, saying, when you grow up, son, have some cheese. Right, we're just mentioning cheese for no reason at all now, aren't we? Have you got some cheese? I'd love a bit of cheese. Do you think it's possible a piece of cheese would do a better job leading the Labor Party? I don't know. Do the public like cheese? Um, yes, I, I think they do. Oh, well, no, then I'll be staying on. Get this. Weekday mornings from nine on Triple M.